Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the education and training that goes into becoming a mental health therapist. And I'm gonna be discussing the things that have been the hardest for me up until this point, and even some of the things in the future that I am a little bit nervous about. So I hope that this video is informative if this is something that you're considering. So let's get into the video. So I am currently going to Pepperdine University to get my master's in clinical psychology. Right now I'm in the internship part of the training process. I'm set to graduate this December. I have more videos specifically related to Pepperdine and the education process. If you're interested in those, I will link them down below. But the very first thing that I will say about the education, it is very long and repetitive. I got my undergrad major in psychology with a minor in counseling. And so I think that that kind of added to the feeling of I've taken all of these classes before, I already know all these things. Cause once you get to grad school, you don't, you don't necessarily have to have a psychology background in order to go to this program. So for some people, it is the first time that they're hearing of these psychologists or these theories. And I did get three classes waived, but three classes is not enough. I should have gotten at least half the program waived because on top of that, it is very expensive. I mean, Pepperdine is way more expensive than a lot of universities in the US, but even so like grad school in general, no matter where you go is going to be pricey. So it can get a bit frustrating that you feel like you're paying all this money to just be told the same information over and over again. Because even when you're in grad school, I've found that a lot of my classes have the same material with maybe just slightly a, a different focus. And then the program's set up, or at least my program is set up where you do the internship sim simultaneously with school. So you're kind of doing both at the same time. And I think that that can get really overwhelming. I wish that it was set up better where you just finished your classes and then did the internship and that was the only thing that you were doing. And in theory, you could set up your schedule that way. It would just take you a lot longer to finish the program. And surrounding the internship part of it, no matter how many classes and trainings and observations you do, nothing actually prepares you for sitting in front of a client and doing those sessions. Because the thing about therapy is that it's so unpredictable. Every client is different, but also every time they come to a session, the situation is different, the mood is different, different and I found that it's really just giving yourself time to kind of figure that out. I mean, I've only been doing my internship for about four months now, so I don't even have that much experience, but I found that it is slowly getting a little bit easier. But when you do start, it does somewhat feel like you were just thrown into it a little bit. Not to mention another thing is that the majority of these internships are unpaid. Most of the time you are doing your practicum internship at a nonprofit organization, and the truth is they just don't have the money to be able to pay interns. And I think that for the most part, like the psychology world looks at it as like a pay your dues kind of scenario, but it's tough because what your internship expects of you is, can be quite a lot. And when you're not getting paid for that, you also might not have as much time to work a job where you are getting paid. So I don't know, it's kind of a messed up system in my opinion. And then after you graduate, not only do you have to take one licensure exam, but two. So first, when you graduate, you have to take a licensure exam that I've heard is, is more based on theory and concept and some like ethical principles. And if you pass that exam, you get what is considered like a conditionary license. Basically, it means that you are not fully licensed as a therapist, but you can get paid. Granted, the pay is still pretty small amount because you're not fully licensed. And then you have to get, which in my opinion is a ridiculous amount of supervised hours. So after you get that, you get three, you work for 3000 hours under supervision, under the supervision of a licensed therapist. And during that time, you're getting paid a lot less for the work that you're doing, even though it's the exact same work you would be doing if you were licensed. And then after you complete all of those hours, which is like a year and a half, two years of work, then you have to take another exam in order to become fully licensed. 
I don't understand the point of having two exams. I've heard that in social work for at least for Illinois, as soon as you graduate, you get like that conditionary license. And then after you complete the supervised hours, you just take one exam and once you get that, you're licensed. So I don't really know why for psychology we have to take two exams, but that's just the way it works. And then even after that, you do have to take a certain amount of continuous education classes. I do feel that that's pretty common for most careers, but the thing that's kind of unfortunate about the psychology career is a lot of times you have to pay for those. I know that for certain companies, sometimes they offer those through the company or they'll pay for you to do them. And the place that I'm doing my internship at um, actually does offer those continuous education classes throughout the year. I don't think they'd pay for them if you wanted to take something different than what they were offering. So there definitely are options. There are places that might offer that, but I'd say more often than not, you'd probably have to pay for those out of pocket, which is just frustrating. And the reason why I find it so frustrating is that the pay for therapists isn't actually that great, especially for how much you have to put in emotionally, but also financially. You can make more money by opening a private practice, but there is a lot that comes along with that as well. All the types of liability insurance you have to get costs money, even renting an office costs a lot of money. And you do make more money in the long run than if you were working for someone. But overall, it does seem a little weird with how much education and training and supervision we need to get to do this job. And at the end of the day, you make what someone could make with like a high school diploma. In fact, one of my professors actually said, don't expect that you can do just this job full time and be able to support yourself. She said, unless you have a partner or spouse that's supporting you financially, expect to work multiple jobs. And honestly, that has kind of been the case that I have seen. A lot of my professors also work as therapists. Some work for the APA. Um, some of them do like clinical supervision or clinical consultations. Now I'm not saying that that is entirely true that you can't like make a living off of being a therapist full time because there definitely is cases where you can. It's also very dependent on where you live. This professor lives in California so I imagine that it's probably a bit more difficult to make a living there and to be able to support yourself because it's more expensive. But even like living in the city of Chicago, there's no way that I could live by myself in this city with the salary that I would be making. And the last thing that I wanted to bring up is the stress that comes along with this job is very real and burnout can happen very quickly. You can have maybe five clients during the day and four of them will go well and then you'll have that last session that is just really really tough for whatever reason and that can leave you feeling just so exhausted and so that's why burnout happens so quickly in this career and i think that that's almost another reason for people working multiple jobs is that some people may struggle to do this full-time. A full-time caseload is usually about 20 to 25 clients a week, which maybe doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is a lot of people, when you think about how much work is like put into those sessions, like to prepare for it, and then even afterwards, the documentation process is pretty intense. But overall, it is very rewarding work if that's something that you want to do, if you truly want to be a therapist. It's definitely a very serious commitment. And something else that's that's kind of nice about it is that for the most part, the jobs that you work will be fairly flexible. If you work for a school or a organization where it's nine to five hours, you'll probably have to be there during that time. But most places you take on your clients and you kind of set what time you're gonna meet those clients. Some places might allow you to do some virtual telehealth therapy so you won't have to commute every day. So there's definitely the pros and the cons, but I do think that it's important to talk about the hard things so that if you are considering going into this field that you're really looking at those and thinking, okay, is this something that I want for my life?
But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I hope that this video was helpful and if you want any more information on these things or something that I didn't mention in the video, please put them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see future videos, please hit that subscribe button below. And uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.